Hi, this is Joseph. It is Monday, June 12th, 2017. I wanted to make this quick video just to share some information to uh, potential subscribers. Uh, <laughs> I've been receiving a lot of emails is the reason that I'm really prompted to make this video. And, and in these emails, I get the questions. Uh, there are several questions that I get on a regular basis. And you're probably thinking and wondering the same thing. So the the first question that I usually get on a regular basis is, what is my trading style like? Do I trade the news? Do I trade technical? Do I trade uh, fundamental? You know, there's always been that argument and there always will be that argument about, uh, you know, technical trading versus fundamental. And since I put together the very first trading course uh, for my students back in 2007, uh, so I, I started trading in 2001. And then uh, in 2007, I opened up a chat room. It was actually early 2007, late 2006. I opened up a chat room and then I offered a trading course. It was to teach all of the students in my chat room exactly how I was trading, what my system was all about. And ever since then, and I've never changed anything, I've always used fundamental and technical analysis. So very often, uh, you know, I get the question, do I news trade? So this brings me all to the same thing. It's all tied together. So news trades, uh, you've probably read this before, not all news trades are really tradable, not all news events. So we look at an economic calendar every day and we try to assess whether or not that opportunity, that uh, e that release of that economic data is actually going to give us an opportunity. Sometimes we can tell, and sometimes I can tell, I teach my students how to do this, sometimes we can tell if it's likely to produce an opportunity and other times we can tell that the market probably isn't going to react. Now that is the combination, having that ability is the combination of doing a couple of different things, looking at the charts technically, looking at price action, noticing consolidation, noticing how long consolidation stays in place, uh, the time frame. So we look at 30 minutes, one hours, and then we also look at the daily charts. And then also overall the sentiment. There's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of internet um, articles and discussion and things that you might be able to find about a particular news event a few days, maybe even a week before that event. Now, obviously some news reports aren't going to get the same kind of coverage that a bigger event like an election or something like that is going to have. So even with big election type events, we can still try to trade those. But again, sometimes it appears pretty obvious based on the information and the, the I refer to it as chatter, but it's basically the market cover, that media cover that you get on the internet talking about that event. So based on that, sometimes you can sort of reflect and tell what people's uh, you know, uh, expectations are. That's really what we're trading is the expectation. What's going to happen? What's going to happen either before the news or after the news? Sometimes everybody waits until after the news, and then we trade the reaction. Other times we wait until after the news, and there isn't a reaction because the news really wasn't sufficient to make any kind of change. In a situation like that, obviously there probably won't be a news trade or a trigger, a trigger or a technical signal for me to actually execute a trade, so I won't. I am very, very particular about my trades. So I'll give you an idea of what I did when I first started trading. In the, in the first year of my trading career, I was a scalper. I traded everything. I was trying to trade the larger time frames as well, daily charts, you know, four-hour charts. I was trading eight-hour charts. I was trading everything. I was just like everybody else. I was doing the same thing, and I was looking for every opportunity. And it was very difficult for me to go to sleep at night because, you know, I thought I might miss a trade. And if I was in a trade, it was really difficult for me to go to sleep at the end of the day or whenever it was when I was just finally exhausted because I was trading 24 hours a day if I could during the week. And if I was in a trade, I was afraid to go to sleep because I didn't know what was going to happen to the trade. I don't trade like that anymore. And there's really no reason to trade like that. It's extremely exhausting. And, and it was fun for a while. And I learned a lot. I have to admit that there is, you know, even the things that, that are a big mistake and even things that I do not do anymore, uh, they they rounded me as a trader. They gave me that fulfillment. I, I understood different things. I understood that some things made more sense. Some things didn't make any sense. There's no reason to trade that way. So if you use my trade copier, and this is the reason that I'm sharing all this information with you, is to give you a better sense of what to expect if you use the trade copier, how I trade, how often I'm going to trade, what you could expect to get as far as results. I'm all about profits. I, I first of all, will protect my capital. So I will not execute a trade because of the amount of money that I put on a trade, I'm not interested in losing any money. I, I'm not going to put on a trade if I'm not 100% satisfied and comfortable 
and convinced that the trade's going to work. There's got to be a reason for the trade to move. There's got to be a reason why price is going to move either up or down. And I have to be able to determine that. I have to be able to, you know, I'm constantly asking myself, why is it moving now? Why would it move? Why would it move in the future? You know, what was everybody thinking before this move? Is there pent up energy or momentum or, you know, that expectation of people waiting to trade an opportunity? All kinds of things. Uh, last week, for example, we were trading based on there was a lot of market media chatter, you know, Internet um, coverage on a couple of currency pairs, the majors. And it was, the expectation was that price was going to go down a little bit lower. And you could see that there was that pressure that traders were, for the most, most part, you know, they continued to put on short positions. But it was at a major support level, and you could clearly see the reversal and the bounce. So I waited and then put on the trade for the bounce. It was another winning trade, and it, and it ended up moving higher. But what I'm getting at is a lot of inexperienced traders will see that information and continue to try to pile on trades or trade in the only direction that they understand based on what they read, not their experience. They don't understand the possibilities. They're still fighting it. They're still fighting the current. And it's an easy way to explain that. And I no longer do that. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. It's just, it was, a, it was a bad experience. You lose a lot of money. So as a result of how I trade, that's the same expectation for you. That is, these are the same results that you're going to get. When I execute a trade on my MetaTrader 4 platform, it, the trade copier will duplicate the same trade. It will execute the same trade for you. So I'm very, very patient. I'll wait five hours. I'll wait seven hours. I'll wait two trading sessions. I'll wait three days if I have to, to find a trade. I want to make sure that every trade that I execute is going to be a winning trade. Now, obviously, I do understand that, and you should too, that occasionally I am going to experience a losing trade. But when I do experience a losing trade, first of all, it is not going to be a big losing trade. It will, at the maximum, be 55 pips. That's the largest stop loss that I use. The trade copier that you're going to use to copy my trades has a setting in the trade copier so that you can protect yourself and specify and set up the maximum stop loss. The maximum stop loss that I use is 55 pips. However, even though that is part of my trading system where my expectation is that if I get into a big trending move, a big continuation breakout trade, if you're following my techniques, that's the one that requires the biggest stop loss. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to take a 55 pip stop loss if I can see that the trade isn't going to work. If I can see that the trade isn't going to work, and I'm managing all of the trades when they're open. So if a trade isn't going to work and it's a big continuation breakout trade, I can close that trade so we don't lose 55 pips. Maximum, we would probably lose maybe 22 pips, maybe 27 pips, maybe 32 pips. That's about the largest stop loss that I've experienced since the first of the year, 2017. I haven't had any losing trades in the last three months. Again, it's not to say that I won't have a losing trade. But again, if I do have a losing trade, it's going to be very, very small. So my ability to recover from a losing trade on the very next opportunity, the very next trade setup that I get is extremely high. You're going to get the same results. If we have a losing trade of, let's say, 20 pips, the very next trade is going to give me the opportunity to earn that loss back right away. Now, I can't say how soon I'm going to get that following trade. It's a matter of waiting for the trade to come to me. I do not chase price. I don't revenge trade. I don't do anything like that. There, It's just not necessary. I know that sometimes you can do okay with scalping, you know, and trying to scalp three pips here, four pips there to try to earn back that 20 pip loss, but I don't do that. I'll just simply wait for the same trades based on my trading system, HL30, continuation breakout trade, T2 pattern, T3 pattern, IMP crown patterns, all of those techniques that I teach, which by the way, I also include as a bonus with the subscription for my trade copier, you'll learn my trading strategy so that you can see what it is that I'm doing. But I wait for those trades to come to me. And I'm very, very methodical, very, very patient. I'm watching the market overall. So I'm looking for clues. I'm looking for signals. For example, when I trade the Japanese yen, the, the dollar yen, I'm sorry, the dollar yen currency pair, I'm watching Japanese yen futures. I'm watching dollar, US dollar futures. Uh, you know, I watch er other areas where I can get a gauge or a grasp on market sentiment, where what's likely to happen next, what are people thinking, what are people expectations, all of that, I take that into account. So my trading system is a blend of both economic news, fundamentals, uh, technical analysis, 
uh, it's very important that I understand why price or I know why price is moving before I execute a trade. And I always have a target. If I don't have a target, I won't execute the trade. Even if I am pretty certain that price is going to move up or down at any given time, if I cannot find a target, I will not trade it. I'm not going to scalp it. I'm not going to get in one time and take a trade and close the trade with three or seven pips. And then the next time see basically the same pattern and then try it and try to hold on a little bit longer. That isn't a system that I can repeat. I want something that I can duplicate and repeat over and over again. That's how I built my trading system. So every trade that I take is the same strategy. It's the same entry, basic strategy entry, and the same distance on these trades. The HL30 has a very specific uh, take profit target, and so does the continuation breakout trade. They're both different techniques. They provide different sets of profits. So with each one of them, I have to confirm them, and I have to be 100% certain that we're going to hit the mark. That's really what it all comes down to. That's what trading's all about. It's to make money. I know that some people are into trading for the fun of it. They like to trade the news. They're into the excitement. I used to do the same thing. I would try to trade non-farm payrolls in my first year of trading uh, my career, and I had disastrous results. You know, Sometimes I would get in looking at the headline number, and then it was the revisions, revisions that would spin it around the opposite direction. It was a mess. It's a nightmare. Uh, I don't trade that way. I am all about making a profit. I want to make sure that I close every month with a profit, I want to make sure that I close every year with a minimum of 10,000 pips, probably 20,000 pips or more if you use the trade copier with me and you uh, get every trade that I execute. That's the results that you'll see. And that's really what it all comes down to. It's overall growth. It's, as they say, like a marathon. It's not a sprint. And I'm very, very careful. Every once in a while, I get into trades where things change. Uh, as I said, even though I might have a specific take profit target, the market changes. Something might happen. Some kind of big major event, something unexpected. That's how trading works. That's how it goes. And I have to make some adjustments. And then I quickly take profits. And we close with what the, you know the profits that we have available. Sometimes it's going to be a 7 pip gain when I expected 55 pips, but that's because the market changed. Something happened. So there was some news that set out later on. That doesn't happen very often, but I want you to know, and the reason that I'm bringing that up is that I'm there managing every one of these trades. The trade copier does not execute trades all by itself. It is me executing a trade on my platform, and then the trade copier duplicates my trading behavior, exactly what I do onto your platform. So there's no minimum requirement. You can trade with a $50 trading account. It doesn't matter if I'm trading with a $100 trading account or a $100,000 trading account. You can still trade with whatever you have available. The trade copier makes that adjustment for you. You get to set the lot sizing, the leverage that you want to use. And then, of course, as I mentioned, that maximum stop loss placement will keep you, it, it'll protect you. You know, it, the everybody should be able to afford experiencing a 55 pip loss on a trade. I am not saying that you're going to. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we're going to have a 55 pip loss on every trade. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if we were to think of the possibilities, you have to at least be able to prepare for that and manage your capital. And that's a very big component of making money and staying in this business is being able to manage your the available capital that you have and to prepare for the possibility that you could experience a loss. Remember, if there is a losing trade, it is not necessarily going to be minus 55 pips. Each one of the trades has a different stop loss. The largest stop loss is 55 pips. But even if that trade, for example, the continuation breakout trade, if it doesn't work out, I can still close the trade with a smaller loss or still a gain, even though it doesn't hit the target because I'm managing the trade. I'm actively watching everything to make sure that my trades are going to win because ultimately what happens in my trading account is the same thing that's going to happen in yours. That's the way you could look at it. I am very, very disciplined. I trade for uh, private individuals. I trade for my family. I've been trading since 2001. And I am always going to be as careful as possible with every single trade that I execute. So again, it's not a, uh, a, a you know a robot type of, uh, of system that will automatically fire off a trade. It is me behind every one of those trades. So you can rest assured that I'm managing them just as carefully as I'm managing the trades with the money in my own uh, trading account. 
So I hope that covers some of the questions. That's basically the same questions that I get over and over again. You know, what kind of stop loss do I have? Do I scalp? I think I covered that. That's another question that I get. Do I scalp? Uh, do I scalp for, you know, small pips, like three, four, five pips? I don't do that. I know a lot of other EAs. I see a lot of the competition that's out there that I have uh, with other signal services. And a lot of them will take, you know, three pips on every single trade, and they'll do that 15 times. And I don't do that. But when they have a losing trade, they won't put a stop loss on it or the stop loss is larger than three pips. I mean, if you were to put a, a, a three pip stop loss on every single trade you got into, you'd get hit a lot. I mean, it would just be it would be a, a really crazy way to uh, to try and manage positions that way. So I don't I don't do anything like that. My trades are very calculated. The smallest time frame that I execute a trade is a 30 minute time frame. The largest time frame that I executed trade for the trade copier is the uh, one hour time frame. That's for the continuation breakout trades. But I am looking at the four hour chart and the daily chart. I trade those separately for myself. And I also teach my students how to trade off of the four hour and the daily chart. And also, but that would require a, sl a slightly larger stop loss. But I don't use those trades with the trade copier. I only day trade with the trade copier and that's the results that you're going to get. So you never have to worry about a big loss or anything like that. It's always going to be a very consistent, profitable, winning month after month after month. I always guarantee that we're going to close every month with a profit. And that's exactly what you're going to get as a result of the trades executed with the trade copier. And again, remember, there are some days. There are just simply some days when really nobody should be trading. There are some really crazy trading days. You've seen them. You've probably experienced them. And I don't trade when the market gets that crazy and it's unreliable and people are losing money left and right. I'll just stop. I'll watch but I'll stop. If it gives me an opportunity, I'll consider it. But if it doesn't give me a trade signal and I can't confirm it and I can't determine where it's going to go and how fast, I stay out of the way. And that's what has kept me into uh, to be able to trade as long as I have and, and to stop blowing up trading accounts is that I know when to stop trading. That's a very important component. And it was a very hard lesson for me to learn. I know how difficult, you know, I make it sound really calm and, and easy, you know, my tone and, and, you know, that it's just so easy. It, it is easy now, but I, I can promise you, and I know that you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was not easy when I went through this. I probably experienced the same fears, the same thoughts that you were feeling right now if you're blowing up trading accounts and you just don't know what to do. I went through the exact same thing. It was hard. It took a long time. I had to control myself. I had to stop and take a look at everything that I was doing and figure out the right way to do this. So with my trading system, I share that with you as a bonus. And uh, if you want to get the same trades, again, we haven't had any losing trades in three months. Uh, this can continue. Usually the summer months now until about October or the end of October, uh, that is usually the these are the months that produce the biggest number of winning not only winning trades but the biggest number of of uh, trading opportunities per month and we make the most amount of money on some of these trades just because of the way the the market sort of the cycles with political events and things like that happen and take place so uh, join us join us get the trade copier add it to the trade uh, to your mt4 account it's easy to install if you need any assistance we can install it for you using team viewer and we can jump on your computer and install it for you. It's easy to do. It's easy. And once you once you have it installed on your MT4 account, you just basically leave it alone. The only thing you might want to add is a very, very cheap or affordable VPS service. That way, you don't have to worry about closing your computer or turning it off. There are times when I turn off my computer and, you know, it would obviously, there wouldn't be any trades executed at that time. When I know that there isn't going to be any trades, I might do some maintenance on my computer and things like that. But if you have a VPS and you set up your MT4 account on the VPS, you know you're never going to miss a trade. So that's, uh, that's the best way to make sure that you capture all the trades. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you listening to my sharing, you know, a lot of the, the information about my trading system, my service, my experience, and my history with trading. If you have any questions, please send me an email that you see. Uh, you can use the email at the very, very bottom of this uh, uh, website. Uh, that's the best email to communicate with me. And I can, I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions.